the environmental degra de degradational implications of deforestation in order to sell the green ethical element of Iceland, but at the same time, it's dissing all of the other um, producers that are using palm oil, mm -hmm. hence why it's banned. So in a nutshell, it's banned because it's telling the truth. Yeah. <laughs> there is no truth in advertising. That, that takes you back to the first exactly. clip, you know? Saying that, app, that cigarettes are not bad for your health and it's, they're just gonna make you happy. We know what, what that, that's just bullshit. So, yes. Um, and that's why I put this word here, greenwashing. Does, has anyone heard of greenwashing? Greenwashing is the new way, or the, the how advertisers are now trying to be more clever and sophisticated in tricking consumers like you and me on an individual basis that if we consume a particular product, i.e. an Iceland product, we're gonna help save the planet. Absolute rubbish. Mm -hmm. Even if everybody didn't buy the products, the bad products or the ones, you know, even if everybody did what they were told, the whole problem is systemic. Mm -hmm. It's global and it's, it's corporations and governments are absolutely complicit with each other in stopping, you know, um, not stopping fossil fuel companies and, and, and yes, encouraging us to think that capitalism can go on forever. That myth, the myth of capitalism. So if we go back into Marx's time in the 19th century, you can see that when he was alive, it was much, it was much more, um, you can understand why people thought capitalism was a good thing, because because they, people didn't think that the planet was being destroyed. They actually thought this, and, and in a way, my Chinese friend here might be thinking this as well. You know, thanks to capitalism, many people have been lifted out of poverty in China. Millions of people. But inequality is growing and the environment is being destroyed. It's being killed. So, you know, that, that's the bad side. So, yeah, so advertising, is the way it's used industrially to get us to believe that capitalism is gonna save us and to hide the fact that capitalism is destroying us is extremely powerful. Is, is that too Marxist? Is that too narrow-minded? Is that even left brain? Yes, because in, in a sense, what I'm trying to encourage you to think about on this course is that there are exceptions to the uses of media that can raise our awareness to make the world a better place, but not if it gets us to believe myths and ideologies that are, that are destroying our lives. But, but clearly, I don't want, you know, that's why I started the lecture by talking about the fact that by being living, breathing, beautiful creatures that we are, we all advertise, we all like to feel good about ourselves. We wanna look good, we wanna feel that we're good. These are, these are natural things, but the human, advertising world turns it into something not good, yeah? But the natural inst instinct to feel good about yourself is not something we should be ashamed about, yeah? But if we're doing it to, to produce envy, if, if it's producing inequality, if it's making poor people feel like their lives are not worth living, I suggest we have a problem. And those poor people, of course, are gonna be much more inclined to commit crime because they, that's the only way they feel they have access to material goods that they can't afford. Yeah. So yeah. there are so many problems associated with advertising. I can add, I feel like advertising is really relying on um, um, having this feeling, emotion of luck all the time. Even if you bought a lot of things, but the time they're just here, it's FOMO, the fear of missing out, and then there's this feeling of luck It's never enough. It's never and it's never enough, enough for the big the, the, the big CEOs of the, the corporations. They are psychologically ill. Yeah. They can't make enough money. Exactly. It's, it's a psychological problem. Exactly. That we are valuing material things above the things that are most important. The things that are most important, I would argue, are spiritual and always between us, not right. not just something that you can fix with a left brain. Yeah, true. Yeah? But this is why I do feel that I always have this conversation with my grandmother that they were very simple and they were their most happiest days. Yeah. How they were barely everything but they were mentally okay and mentally stable. Just yeah. having and now like we're we're having yeah. more money and we're having more 
more resources. Yeah. But we're still having this lack and we still want more and more. And it's like an addiction that never, never stops. That's, and that film will never, I think, that film never, never fulfilled. Yeah. Well, we're addicted to cactus, we're addicted to fossil fuels, we're addicted yeah. to lifestyles that we can't sustain. Yeah. Exactly. We're addicted to something that's deeply unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And it's a never ending thing. Yeah. It's a constant thing. Yeah. And why, why do young people today mostly think I need to be rich mm -hmm. or famous or both? That's mm -hmm. exactly what the media tells them. Yeah. Absolutely. And celebrity itself is advertising. Yeah. Yeah. Celebrity is a form of advertising. It's great if you're a celebrity, apparently. Mm -hmm. But you are being used as an object to, yeah. to basically advertise yourself and advertise products. Yeah. As you are a product if you're a celebrity, you're a product. So we spend most of the, most celebrities complain about not having any private lives and they're always in the media eye, blah blah blah. And most non-celebrities complain that why they want to be celebrities. Now, how crazy is that? That's a really crazy world. But we must we must hang on to our right brains. Yeah. It's not. You know that we know that it's not all bad, and we don't. You know, I don't want to, as I as I always say on this course, I don't want to sort of just be uh, the kind of teacher that just t makes you depressed about. Oh no, the media is so terrible, and it's it, there's nothing we can do. Actually, there's so much we can do once we radically accept the power of the media and how it's changed. Once we know what it's doing, then we can change things. Yeah, yeah. I do believe that. Talking about greenwashing, you just mentioned when you said the word, like a few years ago, everything right in today's world, it's like they're adding the word sustainable with it. Like it was never there in advertising, if you remember, like years ago. Like nowadays, like everything, every company has to have the word with them sustainable. Sustainability was always there. Yes. So they're just it's trying to make an empty this, word. Absolutely. It? Yeah. It's like to, to, to go back to, yeah. to socio, yeah. it's like an empty signifier. Empty signified. So, it, it, what's happened is that advertising has actually drained language of meaning. So, we just use words like democracy, yeah. and they don't mean, mean anything, anything anymore. Yeah. And liberal, they don't have any meaning. Why don't they have any meaning? Because they're not, they're not actually attending to the real world. Yeah? Language started when we were living off the land. Mm. Yeah? But now we've become so alienated from the land so alienated from nature in our urban living quarters that you know so we're losing our sense of meaning and this is all about the left brain having this power nowadays it is unfortunately yeah about that but if you read in the gilchrist and i do encourage you to then you will learn it's not it's not the end of the world the right brain will save us and the right brain is what we all share it's how we connect it's how we empathize Okay, we'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure.